So, this expression that we have written here uh, as j n minus 2 of x n minus 2 this exp, uh, equals the expectation of of these uh, of of the sum of these terms this expression can be written in uh, can be understood also in the following way we can say well it is it's equal to the expected the or let's say the it's equal to the minimum of the expected cost in time period n minus 2 plus the expected cost in time period n minus 1 assuming assuming that an optimal policy is chosen in period n minus 1 right so assuming that you would be you are doing doing the optimal thing after reaching uh, after reaching time period at the beginning of time period n minus 1 what is the optimal thing you would uh, optimal cost you would have at time period n minus 2 well that is verbally given by this 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 particular uh, uh, sentence here uh, it is the expected cost in time period n minus 2 plus the expected cost that you would have assuming you are optimal from time n minus 1 onwards. Now one thing to note here again as uh, as goes without saying this 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 particular expression is to be uh, computed for all x n minus 2. So, it is it is uh, so x n minus 2 in this expression is a parameter. However, uh, x n minus 1 now is not a parameter x n minus 1 was was uh, was a, a parameter of the earlier optimization at at stage n minus uh, n minus 1. So, when k was n minus 1 x n minus 1 was a, uh, was a parameter. So, now at k equals n minus 2 x n minus 1 is actually the realized state the state that would get realized if you took action u n minus 2 at stage n minus 2 starting from a state n x n minus 2. So, x n minus 2 here is the parameter u n minus 2 is also a parameter to be chosen as a function of x n minus 2 and x n minus 1 is random ok. So, more, more explicitly the, this is this minimization is equal to minimum over u n minus 2 greater than equal to 0. Now, once again uh, the since x n minus 2 and u n minus 2 are not random they would come out of the expectation you would have c u n minus 2 plus r x n minus 2 plus the expectation of of j n minus 1 of x n minus 1, but x n minus 1 is itself given in terms of x n minus 2 and u n minus 2. So, it is x n minus 2 plus u n minus 2 minus w n minus 2. All right. So, this uh, a, therefore is the minimization and I can write this even more succinctly I can put I can take the r of x n minus 2 outside since that does not depend on u n minus 2 plus minimization of u n minus 2 greater than equal to 0 c u n minus 2 
plus the expectation of j n minus 1 of of this expression right. So, this is therefore our uh, this is therefore the expression that uh, that we end up with. Now, what we can of course do this now for for every for every stage k. So, at an arbitrary k uh, at arbitrary stage k what the, the verbally the expression that we have is that you would now be looking at a tail sub problem like this. Suppose you are at some stage some stage k this is k plus 1 all the way this is now n. So, what you would have the optimal thing you would do at stage from k plus 1 onwards that is given to you as a fun through j k plus 1 as a function of whatever state will come up there and what we now want to compute is j k. So, notice that the optimal thing you would do here is from k plus 1 onwards all the way till n. Okay. It is not only in period k plus 1 okay. that is that is something that students often get misled by out here it was from n minus 1 till n. So, it looks like what you all you are doing is looking at one period, but what you have to really do is at an R that was just a special case for k equal to n minus uh, when k was n minus 2. Now that you are at an arbitrary k what you need to do is look look at the cost the value uh, the uh, cost to go which is the cost from k plus 1 onwards all the way till n. Okay. So, it is the what you the uh, it is the optimal cost you would incur if you are in an arbitrary state at, at uh, state x k plus 1 at at time k plus 1. Then you so you what you do then to compute the same quantity at time k what you do is look at the cost, the stage wise cost in uh, in this stage and the optimal cost that you would get in this uh, over this time period uh, over this uh, this tail sub problem from k plus 1 all the way till n come take the sum of those two and find the decision that would give you the optimal value of the sum right. So, therefore, in, in English what we really have is the we are minimizing therefore you can say the minimum of the expected cost in period k plus the expected cost in periods k plus 1 till n minus 1 okay, in each of these periods that means the period up till the last period which ends at, at n. So, k plus 1 till n minus 1 assuming an optimal policy will be used for these periods. And that that particular quantity is that this this thing which is in the uh, in the round brackets here this particular is captured by j k plus 1. So, the although here in this in in out, out here in this uh, in this exp in this uh, sentence here what I have said is that we are talking of an optimal policy that will be used in periods k plus 1 k plus 2 all the way till n minus 1 uh, all of that is embedded in j k plus 1 we are not choosing we are here the only the minimization is only being done over the action at time k okay only the u k we are not we are not choosing here the uh, the actions uh, in the subsequent time periods because that has the optimal things to do in those time periods have already been computed and we now know what is it that what the optimal cost is starting from period k plus 1. 
So, all of that computation has already been defined when one uh, when one writes j when one derives j k plus 1 ok. So, doing this we now get j k. So, in other words j k of x k is equal to the minimum over u k greater than equal to 0 of the expectation of r of x k plus c times u k plus j k plus 1 of x k plus 1. And once again this is the quantity which is random x, uh, x k plus 1. So, again I will simplify this I will write this as minimum over u k greater than equal to 0 expectation of r of x k plus c times u k plus j k plus 1 of x k plus u k minus w k which is minimum over u k greater than equal to 0 as by repeating the steps that we have taken earlier we can just I will I'll just skip to the to the final step you we get r of x k plus minimum over u k greater than equal to 0 c times u k plus expectation of j k plus 1 of x k plus u k plus w k. This, uh, this is therefore, this now when done for all x k defines for us the cost to go at time period k. So, this is now this completes now the demonstration of the dynamic programming algorithm for this particular problem. Now, let us what we will do uh, next is let us explore how we could we can potentially compute the optimal uh, the optimal policy and the optimal the optimal actions uh, uh, so the optimal policy and the and the cost to go or the value functions for this particular problem. So, let us uh, let us see dwell a bit on the complexity of doing this. Now, notice that so to begin with this first step here did not cost us anything it was simply a definition j n of x n was being defined as r, capital R of x n for all x n. The the, from the next step onwards we need to we, 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 we have some, some amount of work to do. What we need to do here is a, a minimization over all u n minus 1 the, and this minimization is being performed for every x n minus 1. So, for every possible choice of x n minus 1 we are doing a minimization. So, there is an optimization that is to be done here for every value of this parameter. Now, if x n minus 1 can take any possible real value then this would mean that the one potentially has to do infinitely many optimizations because it would have to be done for every poss potential every possible value of x n minus 1. The same also holds subsequently in fact keeps getting more and more complicated subsequently because now this needs to be done now for x n for every x n every value of x n minus 2 this minimization has to be performed for every value of x n minus 2. And in that minimization will uh, will feature j n minus 1 the the function that you found in the previous step. So, it is imperative that we find the right function here in this step so that it does not affect the, the our calculations to uh, uh, does not adversely affect our calculations in the next step. So, it is important to, to do that properly in the first step that then gives us uh, we, but nonetheless this again has to be done for every x n minus 2 and since if, if your state space is, is infinite like the space of real numbers or, uh, or the space of integers then this becomes a very this becomes therefore a minimization we have to do for every x n minus 2 and so on and this needs to be done therefore for at every generic step k. When we do this what we, we can also as we do this for every x uh, for every value of the state. So, as we do this for every uh, u n minus 1 for, uh, for every x n minus 1 we get the optimal u n minus 1 as well. We, when we solve the optimization problem it also gives us 
gives us as uh, as a corollary it gives us the we also get the optimal un minus 1 star as a function mu n minus 1 star of x n minus 1 right so it's a as a function of this we get uh, we get the optimal uh, the optimal action now because we uh, since since that is what we get then it it uh, what it tells us is that uh, this defines for us also the optimal policy uh, or the optimal decision rule from or uh, for that particular stage so this gives us the optimal decision rule to apply at stage n minus 1 likewise when we do this minimization here we get the optimal optimal un minus 2 star as a function mu n minus 2 star of x n minus 2 and here in general this this defines for us the u k star as a function mu k star of x k. So, this also gives us the policy. So, in either k in a either to find the policy or to find the optimal uh, cost to go uh, what we what, what we really in this kind of a problem would need to do is infinitely many optimizations. Now, there are some ways around it what one could hope uh, one uh, uh, one way could be that you hope for uh, you, uh, you you hope that you can maybe discretize the state space uh, and and then compute the optimal only at the discrete points where you have uh, where you have discretized in that case uh, uh, in in that case the quality of discretization the the, uh, the shape of the cost functions all of that will determine how 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 good the accuracy is and how how bad the complexity is in a problem where the state space is infinite the real uh, may, in many cases the uh, uh, what you would want to look for is is a is a setting where is is to see if you can formulate the problem in which in such a way that you can actually get a closed form expression that this particular uh, compu uh, quantity can be computed in closed form in other words what we get when we when we when we what we hope for is that one doesn't really need to do this for every xk you know one doesn't need to do this for every xk one does this uh, for a token xk and the form that is a that one reduces from there is the uh, is the one that would work for every xk in in other words we find a structural solution for of this particular close uh, a structural closed form solution of this particular uh, of the dynamic programming equations and that gives us the value function at each stage and also the optimal policy uh, there are a few uh, precious few sort of forms uh, pr problem problem structures where such compute such computations are possible where the uh, uh, where the optimal policy and the value function can be computed in closed form we will see those uh, we will see those in the subsequent lectures it is uh, but even though they are uh, they are they are they are small in number uh, but they they also happen to be the most widely applied and they also happen to yield some of the most interesting insights into problems like this what we'll do in this in this lecture and in the next lecture is to look at a a, a slight variation of the inventory control problem in order to more uh, clearly illustrate the kind of calculations uh, we can do so what we will as we will make a few assumptions so the first assumption we'll make is that the demand and the the action which is the amount of additional stock we order these can only take values of non negative integers so this earlier we we had we we were we had not made any such assumption which means that you one could order any amount of stock any fractional amount of stock and the demand could also take any kind of any possible value including fractional values what we are now assuming is that the demand can only uh, take values in as non negative integers so which means we'll assume that uh, wk in z plus what is z plus well this is the set of inti uh, non negative integers 0 1 2 and so on all the way till infinity and similarly uk is also going to be a non negative integer so uk can also take only non negative integer values 
we had also we had earlier allowed the stock to uh, to go to negative uh, which means uh, which would which uh, for us uh, uh, said that uh, denoted that if this 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 denoted unfulfilled demand any fulfilled uh, demand that were not being fulfilled was backlogged and was being recorded as a negative inventory in our system so on the uh, for, but this time we will say that any stock that is not any uh, demand that is not fulfilled is lost okay so as a result the 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 stock that you have in the next time period is always is given by a different equation so the state dynamics are now different xk plus 1 is now going to be equal to the maximum of 0 or xk plus 1 plus uk minus wk. So, what does this equation mean? Well, it means that if, X, if xk is the stock that you have at stock at, at time k, this is the stock that we have at time k and this then, then this is the amount of demand that we, uh, uh, so this is the amount of additional inventory we order, this is the action the amount of additional stock order. additional stock ordered and wk here is the demand so wk is the demand so in that case uh, what, what this is this equation is basically saying is that well if your demand is such that it uh, it is less than the total stock you have at the beginning of the time period which means the stock which is which includes the stock that you had from the earlier time period which is xk and the additional stock that you ordered okay the total that you have to fulfill the demand is xk plus w uk so so if wk is less than xk plus uk then whatever you are left with at the end of time period k which means at the beginning of time period k plus 1 is equal to xk plus uk minus wk right so what you are left with is xk plus uk minus wk on the other hand if wk exceeds that then the additional demand is uh, is not backlogged it is lost and what is what you are left with is only is is zero inventory right so xk plus 1 is then equal to zero so if wk was is greater than this the sum of the first two terms uh, is this greater than the sum of these two terms then then the, the stock at the next time period would be equal to uh, would be equal to 0 right. So, th therefore, this is our this is now our state equation. Okay. So, what we will assume also is that there that one cannot that we do not have space or we do not have holding capacity for more than uh, uh, for uh, for uh, uh, for more than uh, 2 units. So we so we will assume that there is that we have we do not have st storage capacity for stock that is more than 2 units. So, which means that when the stock that you have an additional any and any additional stock that you order has to be in total less than equal to 2 units. So, we all we have xk plus uk this this has to be less than equal to 2 ok. So, as you can see this manifests as a constraint now on uk which means that we cannot order any more than 2 minus xk ok. So, u this effectively means that uk is less than equal to 2 minus xk where xk is the amount of inventory uh, inventory we have and remember also that uk still is required to be greater than equal to 0. So, this is our earlier requirement our requirement from earlier. We will also assume that the holding or storage cost in case you have um, uh, 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 the uh, uh, the we will uh, we'll also assume that the uh, holding or storage cost that, that you are left with when uh, for the inventory that you are left with which is which is uh, a function of which is a function of uh, basically the inventory that you are left with is is given in, in the following form. So, so the so the holding or cost 
for the kth period is x k plus u k minus w k the whole squared. This particular is this particular term is the is our stage wise cost. So, okay. so, this is going to be the stage sorry. So, this particular term is one component of our stage wise cost. Okay. The other component comes from the cost of ordering additional inventory. So, this is the holding or storage cost and then there is a cost for additional inventory which is which is given by so we will assume that the 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 uh, the cost of inventory is is unity so you get the the cost of additional inventory is 1 times uk finally the terminal cost which we often denote by gn of xn this particular quantity is 0. So, there is no terminal cost associated with, uh, uh, with, uh, with this problem. So, for any any state terminal cost is equal to is equal to 0. Now, the demand takes uh, takes values of non uh, as non negative integers. So, let us also we will let us also specify the probability distribution of the demand. So, or the noise in the problem. So, we have the probability that w k is equal to 0 this this probability is 0 0.1 the probability that wk is equal to 1 is equal to 0 0.7 and the probability that wk is equal to 2 2 units is equal to 0 0.2 you can check that these three add up to 1 which means that effectively the demand can be either 0 1 or 2 okay so then with these particular probabilities there's no other possibility for the uh, for the demand we will also assume that the initial state initial state x0 is equal to 0 that means one starts from we start with an initial uh, initial inventory of 0 okay. so what one wants to do now is uh, is to find the optimal cost over a certain time period so the time time horizon that we are considering so we will consider n to be 3 so, with this now we have the full problem formulated. We have W k which, which has this particular dis, uh, expression. The stage wise costs are, uh, are, uh, are, are given by this. So, the, so the stage wise cost is a sum of this, these two terms here. So, the sum of this term and this term u k plus x k plus u k minus w k squared. Um, uh, this particular term is our stage wise cost. The terminal cost is this term g n of x n is identically equal to 0 that is our terminal cost. The, sta the, sta the action that we can choose is an integer action subject to a certain set of constraints. So, it means it has to be greater than equal to 0 and less than equal to 2 minus the uh, these uh, the stock that you start with 2 minus 2 minus x k. So, that is the uh, constraint on the action the dynamics okay these are our dynamics the state dynamics are given by this this equation here xk plus 1 equals the max of 0 0 comma xk plus uk minus wk right and we start the problem with an with empty inventory that is x0 equal to 0 and uh, and uh, uh, we will be solving it over over 3 time periods that is n equal to 3. So, we will explicitly solve this in the next in the next class.